Good morning and welcome to Mike Ferry TV. It is, of course, the week of May 20 to 26, and happy Memorial Day weekend for those celebrating. We're going to take a little break from our series of 21 topics on the Mike Ferry sales system, and I want to introduce an idea to you, which is actually going to set us up for next week's listing presentation. In doing the series of events that I do in May and June throughout California, Nevada, Arizona, I've been talking to every one of the agents about the importance of taking listings and some of the ideas that are required to make that work. I'm going to be doing that, of course, next week with you on our TV program, but I want to set it up this week by asking you to look very carefully at four very specific yet very generic words in relationship to listing property. The four words I want you to think about are mindset, skills, action, and motivation. And what I want to do today is take a few minutes and talk to you about those four words. I think, I believe, in fact, I'll even go so far to say is I know for a fact that any agent that works hard to develop those four words internally and make them part of who they are, are going to be stronger at listing property. Now, you can say, and I understand fully, that obviously mindset, skills, action, and motivation apply to most parts of our life, which they do. And it doesn't really matter what your job function is. If those four words are in effect in your life, you're probably going to have a little better life than you had in the past. We want to focus on listing property. Uh, as I've been telling every audience I've spoken to in the month of May, if you can list property, you can survive and you can live through this upswing in the market. If you can't list property, this is going to be a very difficult time for you. And the reason it's going to be so difficult is because with the inventory shrinking and the backlog of buyers coming into the market, which they are today, if you don't control some facet of the inventory, if you're not capable of listing property, taking listings on a regular basis, you're going to be shut out with the buyers you work with because there's millions of buyers now coming into the marketplace and a handful of listings. And as you know, you're going to show property many times, 10, 20, 30 properties to a buyer you're going to write 10, 20, 30 offers, and in most cases, there's 10 offers on each property. So without the skill set, the mindset, the actions, and motivation to list property, you really are going to have a more difficult time in a good market than you had in a bad market. Now, watch this thought. 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, those wonderful years in our life, everybody suffered greatly. There's no question about it. I don't care who you were, you suffered. And we told all of our good clients in those years, you had to take probably three times more listings to get one to sell. Well, the good agents worked hard, kept taking the listings, and as a result, they were very productive in the worst of times. Now, here's the challenge we're facing today. If you're not taking listings, as I just said, you're battling against thousands of agents and hundreds of thousands of buyers to try to get a property for a buyer. So technically, it's going to be harder for the masses to earn money in an up market than it was for the masses to earn money in a down market. I know that's going to sound strange to you, but you have to look at the global real estate market instead of your desk, your computer, and your one lead that you have. You have to look at things in a much bigger picture. It's actually harder in a good market if you're not a listing agent to be productive, then it is in a bad market because your sources of finding homes for buyers are limited, as a lot of people have heard me say. In real estate, the employer is the listing agent and the employee is the showing agent. The employer has thousands of people working for them because <clears throat> they control the inventory, control the listing. We need to help you learn to control the marketplace by controlling the listings. And we're going to talk about it a lot over the next several weeks. So let's go back to the four words. Mindset. What do I mean by mindset of a listing agent? Well, you have to change. Here we are on my left side now working as a real estate agent. And I have to make a complete shift to the right side and say, my only job, my only function, everything I do has to result in taking a listing. That is a shift in the mindset. The mindset of a listing agent is totally different than the mindset of a showing agent. As I've said for the last several weeks, time and time again, and I know this will never take place, believe me, I believe that every real estate agent, the day they get their license, has to declare, I'm going to work with buyers, 
or I'm going to work with sellers. No, it's never going to happen because the mindset and the skills of an agent working with buyers are totally different than the skills of those who work with sellers. And we go back and forth. Well, the path of least resistance in real estate is to work with buyers because it's easier to sell a home to a buyer than list a home for sale. And because most of us don't have the mindset that requires us to focus every day on listing property. If we're going to list property, we have to prospect every day. We have to do lead follow-up every day. We have to pre-qualify every day. We have to be very strong in our presentation skills. We have to handle objections. We have to close the sale. Showing property does not require that type of a mindset or skill. So therefore, if I'm going to be a productive agent in today's market, I have to shift my mindset from the fact that it's okay to work with buyers to I have to take a listing. Now, let's take this thought. If you had to get a listing this week and there was no choice, either you get a listing or you lose your license, could you get a listing this week? I mean, besides listing your own home for sale, could you get a listing? And the answer is yes, you could. Obvious question, then why don't you? So the mindset is a shift in how we think about the real estate business. Work on making that shift this week. So at the latest, next week when we talk about the listing presentation and the next week on pricing, you can move with what's going on for those that are succeeding today. The second word, of course, I asked you to write down is the word skills. See, the skill set of a listing agent is up here. The skill set of a showing agent is down here. No, I'm not putting down the agents that are showing property to buyers all the time. But listen carefully. You're never going to be as productive as a listing agent. They're going to outproduce you day after day, listing after listing, deal after deal, check after check. Listing agents average income is up here, showing agents average income is down here. Well, Mike, I'm okay making thirty, forty thousand dollars a year. And I'm okay if you're okay. In fact, I think they wrote a book on that. But the point is, you're never going to be the production person you want to be without the skills of a listing agent. I just mentioned, if I'm showing property, the basic skill is opening the door and asking them, do they like the house? And if they say yes, writing a contract. The skills behind listing property are totally different. You have to know how to prospect to go out and find potential sellers. You have to know how to use 12, 13 different prospecting techniques. You have to have the skill of the, of the actual verbiage and the words to use when you're out prospecting. You have to be very aggressive in your lead follow-up once you find a prospect. That is a skill we have to develop. Then we have to take on the skill of pre-qualifying. Because when we are pre-qualifying, we're finding out the real motivation of that particular seller. In one of our seminars last week, one of the ladies challenged me by saying time and time again in front of the whole room, even if they're not motivated, and even if they're not really have to sell, I like to go talk to them anyhow. And I said, well, lady, basically what I want you to understand is this. There are four personality styles. There is the obvious driver, Mike Ferry, the expressive, the amiable, the analytical. There's four boxes of personalities. Now we have box number five, idiots. And ma'am, you fall into that box. Because if you're spending all your time talking to people that don't have to sell, you're wasting all of your time, which is the only asset that we as commission salespeople have. Guys and gals, if you're talking to people that don't have to sell, you're wasting your time, which is your only asset. Now listen, you can't stop time unless you're dead. Then time stops. Since we're alive, let's keep time moving in our favor by the skill of pre-qualifying. Then the skill of making a great listing presentation. And boy, I tell you what, we're going to talk about that a lot next week. And then the skill of handling objections. See, there's a whole different skill set. So first, I have to develop the mindset of a person that is going to be strong at listing property. My job here is to list property. Second, develop, of course, the, the skills that go with it. And then third, I wrote down the word action. If you're showing properties to buyers, you're not taking production-oriented action steps every day. You're not doing that. Don't tell me you are. See, you, you can debate me all day long, but you're not going to win this one. Showing agents are primarily going to work on the weekends. 
Listing agents have to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and sometimes on Saturday. They have to take action every day. So what I want you to ask yourself is this. Are you actually taking production-based actions every day? See, if you're taking production-based actions every day, you're going to win this game. If you're not taking production-based actions, you're not going to win the game. Oh, I know. My, my goal is to do 10 sales a year. Great. I'm all for it. But don't get in the way of those people who want to do 30, 50, 75, 100 who are taking listings. Let's be real honest here. How often do you meet an agent doing 30, 50, 75 deals a year, the worst of buyers only? The answer is, watch my lips, never. It doesn't exist. The people that are making money in real estate are listing agents. They're taking the actions required to make it happen. Then the fourth word is the word motivation. And if you look at the word motivation, it basically says motive to action. Do you have the motive, the desire, the goal, the objective, the plan to take action? See, a listing agent has a different motivation than a showing agent. Almost all the listing agents we work with, and we work with most of the good ones, are producing at a level up here. They have stronger goals, stronger desires, a different passion for accomplishing something. So let's do a be honest here. Are you completely satisfied with every aspect of your financial life? Are you completely satisfied that what you're doing today is going to create long-term financial security for you? Or are you working from paycheck to paycheck? Are you hoping that you get a deal now and then so when the bills come in, you can pay them? Because see, it's a whole different motivation. I said to a group yesterday, here's what I want you to think about. What does it cost you a month to live? And I made them all write down from their personal, household, family expense. What does it cost a month to live? And then I said, okay, what's your average commission check? And I went around the room and I asked people what it costs a month to live. One guy, probably 32 years old, said, cost my wife and I 1500 bucks a month to live. And I thought, wow, we need to elect this guy president of the United States. He's got a stronger budget than most of us do. One lady said it cost her 30000 a month to live. Well, I hear these numbers all over the place every day. The lady that costs 30000 a month to live, who is a single lady raising her kids, is going to sell more property than the fellow that cost 1500 a month to live. Because his average commission check was 5000 And his wife didn't work. If he sells one home every couple of months, he's okay. But this lady here, whose average commission check was 6000 said, I have to sell seven or eight homes a month to pay the bills, to pay the taxes, to create some financial security. A different motivation. Question, what is your motivation? If you don't have any, you're going to do minimal production with buyers. High motivation, maximum production working with sellers. You have to decide which way you're going to go. Now, I wrote down a couple of thoughts here. Why do our clients average dramatically more production than any of my competitors? I, I want to share with you a fun story. I had an agent approach me yesterday and say the following. I'm considering switching from your company to one of your competitors. Okay, happens every day. Some of ours go to them, some of theirs come to ours. It's just it's called life, okay? Some people shop at one store, some go and switch to another store. It's called life. I said, may I ask why you're doing that? Now listen to what this person said to me. Well, there's two reasons, Mike. This person, this other coaching company said, we're not gonna coach you on achieving all these ridiculously high goals. We're gonna coach you on what you do and how to make it a little better. I said, well, that, that's good, I like that. I said, what do you do? And the person said, well, I don't do much. They're going to coach you how to not do much better? Quite honestly, I said, lady, have you had your IQ checked? What the heck's the matter with you? You're going to, have, you're going to pay a company to coach you.